All right, so let's take a closer look at this pretty unique printer, which is made by Anchor. So sitting here on the table, it looks quite unique, and yeah, it doesn't take up too much room, especially if you put the spool holder up instead of side. It's reasonably compact. So starting here on the top, we got these end caps here, and these are just covers, looks like. This is metal here below, so we got two extrusions here going down. Then we got another aluminum bar here. So yeah, lots of metal parts. So for the Z-axis, we do have lead screws, and they are dual on each side. So even though this thing looks quite unique, it's traditional the way it's built we got the dual Z's and then we got belts and motors for the X and the Y and so the X runs here on this rail and there's the belt there and we do have these two ends on each side so this end here is going to be our touch screen with a USB-C port on top venting here on the side got a little anchor make a logo there going over here we actually have the camera and this is supposed to be like an AI camera that knows when your print is released from the bed or maybe getting tangled or not printing at all and also the does appear to be some kind of light here too so that'll be quite interesting to see what kind of capabilities it has and then we have our touch screen here on the front where we're going to control everything let's go ahead and peel this protector very nice decent size looks like about 4.3 inches and so going to the other side we have the extruder and it's also quite unique because it's all enclosed and you guys can see we have two exits one's an electrical wire and the other one's a ptf e-tubing and they travel together into the hot end here on the front we have an m and this appears to be like a light so that's pretty cool. And going to this side, this is where we're gonna feed our filament in. Yeah, it appears that this is not the extruder because we do have a release arm here. So this must be just a detector here and it feeds through here, which is kind of interesting that they did it this way because you can put the spool holder on the top, I bet you can just feed it straight to here without even having this tube, but then you probably would lose your detector. And our plug is permanently connected there. Some venting here on the side, we can kind of see the motor there and some heat brake fan. And the other side also can see some kind of parts cooling fans. So looking underneath the hot end, we can see that we do have dual parts cooling. And this is our heat block, which has this green silicone sock, and that's our nozzle. Yeah, very nicely constructed and quite unique looking. And we have this pretty cool Anchor Make logo here on the front that's chrome. So going down from there, we have the build plate. And this is a 235 by 235 squared with 250 millimeters tall print volume. So yeah, very reasonable, quite standard for me medium format. So we do have this tab on the bill plate that we can pull it off. So it is magnetic as it is a steel sheet that's flexible, which is very nice. And it has PEI coating on both sides. Underneath that, we can see the magnetic mat. And below the mat is our heating platform, which is an aluminum bed. And the bed frame is actually plastic. And there doesn't appear to be insulation, which is not a big deal for this printer as the size is not too large. So you guys can kind of see the rollers there. So this side here is the adjustable ones with the eccentric nuts there. And those two there are stationary and they do push out to the outside. So what's kind of cool about this printer is it has dual y-axis belt which should help a lot with vibrations and also high speed printing and going down on the front here we just have venting all the way through now if we go to the left side there's nothing too much to see here except our spool holder which we'll take a look at the back in a second but if we go to the right side we can see that there's a little opening here and this is actually our voltage selection so I don't know how well you guys can see but mine is set to 115 so make sure you're on the correct setting so if you live in the US North America it should be 115 and if you're in Europe it's 230 and yeah not too much going on here so flipping around to the back you guys can see it's pretty clean over here you can see the mounting where you can mount the spool holder going up and then kind of run your filament down like this I prefer it better going to the side as it's a more direct feed into the feed port here so this is what the back of the hot end looks like got that release arm there then our wheels when we adjust it here this little bracket actually is for the end stop switch which appears to be optical on this printer and then again there underneath the hot end so on this side of the channel we have the manufacturing label here says the name of our printer the voltage is available and not too much here just typical certifications things like that so so looking at the back of the bed we can see this is our wire and seems to be very well made where it travels with the bed and it is strain relief under there you guys can maybe kind of see so again more venting on the very back and going this way we have the on and off switch it is fused and this is where our input power will come in and we do have four pretty large squishy rubber feet on each side so yeah very unique printer so for the next part let's go ahead and plug it in power it on and level the build plate all right so I got the printer plugged in again make sure your voltage is set correctly I'm gonna hit the power button and it powers up a little animation there so here it starts with all the different languages you can choose from I'm gonna click English and 
save. So here it tells us how to clean the build plate with the rubbing alcohol. So as you use it, you need to clean it out as the grease builds on it. For best results, you want to keep it in these temperatures between 59 and 95 degrees. So as we talked about earlier, they do have an app you can download and it gives you more control and freedom over the 3D printer. Connecting it to the network lets you control it from anywhere and also monitor your print via this camera. So let's skip this for now. So here it says that we need to out a level and it will take about 10 minutes, which is quite long. Let's go ahead and click the out a level button. It tells us here we have 49 points. So it looks like it's preheating to 180 on the nozzle and 60 on the bed. And also, if you guys notice, maybe we got a little light here that went up and it's orange pulsating. And pretty impressive how many points it takes on not too large of a bed. All right, looks like we got some movement. So our X is working, our Y is working, and now the Z coming down. All right, so it goes pretty low. Okay, so it uses the nozzle as the leveling sensor so it must have a strain sensor inside of it so if you guys can see maybe i'm not sure but yeah the z is pushing down on the nozzle so on the screen here we can see that it shows one out of 49 so okay there we go now we have two so it took some basic measurements and now it's taking precise measurements And also we do have a countdown of how much longer it's going to take. It looks like 6 minutes and 40 seconds. Alright, looks like it's complete. So that did take a little while, but not too bad. So let's click on done. And now we come to the main menu. So it looks pretty explanatory here. We've got temperature on the top of the nozzle and the bill plate. A little Wi-Fi icon not connected. This looks like the settings button. Let's see. Yes, it is. Start, preheat, and control. So under preheat, so if we click here, it'll preheat it to those temperatures. And there it goes. Control, give you axis controls. Also home. Auto leveling, which we just did. Extruder controls. It gives you a reminder to move the nozzle up before you do this. Here you can retract and extrude. Lock motor, so this is going to lock or unlock all the axes, and Z axes offset. So if we need to go up or down a little bit, you can adjust that here. So in the settings, we got language, network, firmware, custom, restore, about, and log upload. So we saw the languages, the network, so we're going to do that through the app looks like. Firmware, this is the version here, and you can check for updates, but since we're not connected to anything, it won't work. Custom, so notification sounds, RGB light, and temperature, either in Celsius or Fahrenheit. So we're going to keep that on Celsius. And you can turn that side light on and off, you guys can see. So if you don't want it, you can turn it off. And the sound, obviously, if you turn that off, it won't beep anymore. So I'm going to leave everything on. We've got the restore button, which I'm not going to click. And then about, and that's everything about this printer, which it shows us here. The build volume is 235 by 235 by 250. And also here you can upload some logs. So, yeah. Let's click on the start button. It gives you an option here between local and USB. So the USB is going to be up here. Now, what's interesting is they don't include nothing to plug into here to even carry files from the computer to the printer. So you're going to have to rely on wirelessly moving those around, which is kind of interesting. And then we'll see if we can figure that out. But let's click on local. And we do looks like have a test model in here. It does say anchor make model. And it is some kind of file. Let's go ahead and print that out. But before we can, we do still have to load our filament. And I'm going to use my own filament here. So let's grab our little snippers. Cut the filament on an angle. And it's going to go right here. And then into the input port here on the side. So let me see if I can turn this to the side so you guys can see a little better. But yeah, we're just going to literally push this in. It does seem to go easy, but if you do have a hard time, try twisting the wire a little bit. Or the filament. And that will make it easy to kind of pop through whatever is resisting but mine went through perfectly and cutting it on an angle obviously also really helps for it to slide through easily so what we're doing here is we're pushing it through this PTFE tubing all the way down into the hot end now when you get to a wall and doesn't go anymore you have to push this little lever here on top to release the arm so once you release it now you can push it through all the way and this is the part that might be a little harder to do as mine doesn't seem to want to go but it does grab onto the extruder teeth so if you can't push it through all the way like i couldn't there 
We can go to the screen, go back here, and go to control, then extruder, extrude. So it's gonna start pushing it through, and there it goes. You can kind of see it there. Yeah, it's probably a little too close there to the bed, but in any case. All right, so it looks like we do have filament coming out. I'm gonna just carefully slide this over. And now we're ready to print. So let's go back to start, local. We'll click on this model and it loads it up. It looks like it's some kind of test file. It's gonna take 33 grams, so it's pretty decent size. And two hours and three minutes, so not too long. All right, so let's click on print. And it started, it's heating up. It's homing. All right, well, there it goes. Okay, so it's going really quick, and the offset does look okay, but I'm really surprised how quick it's going. That's uh, quite crazy, actually. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so the offset does look pretty good. It kind of looks a little too close for me. Just a tiny bit. And I'm not sure where you would adjust that. Is it here? No, we can just adjust the temperatures here. It is set to 250 millimeters a second. Very interesting. You can't adjust nothing except for the heated bed and the nozzle at this point. Very interesting. I was not expecting that, to be honest. All right, well, maybe it needs an update or something. It is close, but I think it's going to be fine, as I guess closer is better, especially for this kind of speed, which is insane. So we can see here it's got two hours left in one minute. The printer is boogieing along, and you guys hopefully can see there that it's doing a great job. Everything is sticking, and it's already at 2%, so... First thing I'm really noticing is how loud it is. It's very loud. And it's not so much the stepper motors. I can understand how you hear those at this kind of speeds. But it's the fans. The fans are very loud, guys. So I'm going to bring my microphone in. very very obnoxiously loud so if you're the person that doesn't like loud printers you're not gonna like this thing because it has a lot of sound but on the flip side it seems to be doing an excellent job on its print there and i'm impressed of how fast it started and everything is sticking and it looks good so yeah i guess we're just gonna let this thing print out and we'll see what it turns out like actually guys i just realized there is an offset it's kind of grayed out right here it says there if you click on that it actually pulls off the offset you want to go up or down there's plus and minus so yeah it does have it i just didn't notice it because it was kind of grayed out there right underneath so and yeah you guys can see the screen looks very nice pixel density is also good and overall it's nice and vibrant All right, looks like our first print is done. So it took two hours and eight minutes. And actually here it says we saved five hours and 58 minutes. So because it prints so fast, this would take, I guess, six hours plus the two, about eight hours. So yeah, I guess it does save you quite a bit of time, but man, was it boogieing along and I was kind of nervous for it because I don't know how well it's gonna print, but it looks like we printed out very nicely actually. So I do like that they have a reprint button here. So if you do want to print over and over again, you can, which is a nice option. So let's click on finish and it goes back to the main menu. So the bed is still pretty hot and If we pull it off, we can see that the model pretty much comes right off and uh, Yeah, since this is a test model, there's a few moving parts in there Maybe you guys can see or not, but no. So it's the tolerant test pins. It did very well there and you guys can see how well it just comes right off So yeah, just that little flex pulling it off made the model pop off
So the PEI sheets work very well. All right, so let's look at this thing. Um, the bottom first here. So everything looks good. We can see our overhangs are very nice. So the 0 0.3, 0 0.4, I guess 0 0.5 and 6. Can't really tell, it's kind of all smeared, but all of them came out except for the 0.2, and the 0.2 seems like it almost wants to. Let's see if we can move it around. And look at that, it still comes out. So yeah, very cool, so this printer has a great precision all the way to point two. So here we have some overhangs. Also did an excellent job. As we did get to the top, you can kind of see it does sag a bit, but still overall pretty good for this kind of distance, quite long. And then we got this overhang here up to 15 degrees and it did also very well. Started to get a little droopy here, but not bad actually, very reasonable. Here we have a diameter check. Also got some measurements here, more overhangs up here. I'm going here to the top. We got these pins which it did better than I thought it would. There is very fine stringing, but it's so slight, meaning like it's really thin. So they can probably be burnt off really easily with some heat gun or something. Well, I just broke one of the uh, little points, but yeah, overall very impressive. And to be honest, I feel like it's gonna do very well with anything we throw at it. And not even that, do it very quickly. 